Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and this week I'm wishing my American neighbors a happy Thanksgiving by giving roasted ham a cake over. That's right. I said cake over, not cake with ham in it. Don't worry. I'm not gonna go there. To make this roast ham cake, I am dyeing nine pounds of my ultimate vanilla batter. Well, a hammy kind of pink. Once my pink cakes were baked, I removed them from their pans, leveled them, and cut the caramelization away from the bottom. So yeah, I was really, I could have used a model, but I didn't have the time to bake a whole ham just to look at it. Now it's time to simple syrup these cakes with the help of Sir Squeeze. He too was confused by the color of these cakes. He did like a double take. He was like a, what? Say what? While the simple syrup is soaking into my cakes, I am going to dye some Italian meringue buttercream ham color. So I used the same colors that I used in my cake batter, which were a soft pink and a dusty pink, and just mixed those into my buttercream until I felt it matched the cakes as best as possible. Next, it's time to fill my cakes, my ham-colored cakes with my ham-colored buttercream, and I'm going to begin by stacking them upright. Don't worry. It will turn into a ham eventually. For now, I wanna fill them and chill them to get ready for carving. Please share this video because who makes a cake that looks like a roast ham? Up next, I need to carve this into a ham. Now the good thing about this is you don't really have to stress about carving because well, hams come in different shapes. I carve for a bit while it's upright and when I'm ready, I flip it onto that flat side and I continue to carve. You want all the caramelization gone and you're kind of looking for just like a rounded ham. So Orhan, pictures of roast ham. Just fan them around me. I'm surprised you didn't make a roast ham template, Yolanda. I didn't. I, I didn't, I couldn't find one online, believe it or not. It's probably a good cake to start with because the carving isn't that hard. It's very forgiving. Once I'm happy with the shape of my roast ham, I just need to carve the face of the ham a little bit. So what I wanna do is on the flat sort of front, I'm gonna use a small serrated knife to cut in some lines into the ham, because the ham wouldn't just be like flush. You know what I mean? Do you mean like the front of the ham? The front of the oh, ham. I understand. Like the cross, I'm sorry Jocelyn. <laughs> for the cross section of the inner ham. Now it is time to crumb coat and chill this ham, still using my ham colored Italian meringue buttercream. My ultimate vanilla cake, Italian meringue buttercream, and simple syrup recipes are all in my cake book, which is available at howtocakeit.com. We also have crumb coat and chill bundles and pretty much everything you need for holiday baking. Black Friday through to Cyber Monday is the best time to do holiday shopping at howtocakeit.com because prices will be the lowest ever and you'll get everything in time for the holidays. Now that my crumb coat is chilled, I'm going to ice this cake one more time in ham colored buttercream and chill it again. It's just getting hammier and hammier. We've been getting a bit of flack because we forgot to wish our fellow Canadians Happy Thanksgiving like a month ago. So Canadians, I'm really sorry. It was my turkey brain. I apologize. We didn't even make a Canadian Thanksgiving cake, yeah, Jocelyn. I don't know. Why is it my fault? We made a pencil. <laughs> it's time to move on to fondant. And the first thing I'm going to do is cover the cross section of the ham with some pink fondant. I roll out my ham colored fondant, apply it to the cross section of the ham, and then trim away the excess all the way around the ham. Yep. Ham pink fondant. Not hot pink, not soft pink, not baby pink. Ham pink. Now I need to use a veining tool to create texture in this cross section of a ham and make it look like, well, the face of a roasted ham. There will be a bone sort of in the center of this ham. So I make some impressions of lines that run from where that bone will be to the outside of the ham. And then after that, I used a thinner, smaller veining tool to create texture all over the ham because it's meat. I needed it to look meaty. Yeah. I feel so bad for the vegans and vegetarians. Is this the solution? Yeah. Vegetarian ham? Yeah. Okay, just bake a ham that looks like a cake. No, bake a cake that looks like a ham. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> the other the other way around would be really difficult. <laughs> I should try that on the channel. I cover the rest of the ham in my roasted ham skin colored fondant 
rolling it out, draping it over the ham, and then trimming the excess where it meets the cross section or the front of the ham, as well as the excess away from the bottom of the whole roast. Mmm, roasted ham skin color. I can't wait to try this cake. Yeah, you can't, or Han took it all. <laughs> Did he really? He took the whole thing. <laughs> he even took the accompaniments. Like, what? Oh, well, I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> yes, there's going to be a side dish. He took it too. He took the whole thing. It's time to create a crisscross pattern on the ham skin. You're not gonna believe what I did, Chelsea. Actually, you are. So the first thing I did was I used a fabric measuring tape to score the ham in one direction. Right? Well, they had to be straight. So then I had to turn the fabric measuring tape the other way so that I could get like a crisscross. And you know what I did? What? I made it too straight. So I, I literally lined it up like perpendicular to the first set of lines. And then I scored two lines in the opposite direction and realized it looked more like a grid, like a graph, <laughs> than a crisscross. So at this point, I talked it over with Jeremy and I was like, I can't do this. Um, I, I started to make the lines again. Because what you want is more of like a triangular shape rather than squares on the hem. And don't worry about the two mistake lines, they will be covered up later what you get for always trying to be straight. I would like to make the bone for my ham at this point and I'm going to make it out of modeling chocolate. I cut a slice of really cold modeling chocolate and then I used some circle cutters to cut out two circles, one within the other so that I could have a round bone to place in my ham. Then I wanna take just a little bit of my leftover pink ham fondant and soften it and place it inside the bone. Now I'm going to peel off my modeling chocolate bone so that I can add texture to this pink fondant. For this, I'm using a small grass piping tip. In order to make the face of the ham look more realistic, I'm going to paint it with some food coloring. It looks a little flat right now. I want it to look juicy. I had to experiment a little with this. I've never painted a roasted ham cake before. So I used uh, the same two colors that I used in my batter and my buttercream. And then I tried to mix in a little bit of white, a little bit of ivory, and I just played with it a few times. I painted it about two or three times, letting it dry in between until I was happy. I need to move on to painting the roasted ham skin. I have a really quick announcement that I'm very excited about. I'm going back out on the road. We are going back out on the road. I'm going to be signing books in LA on November 28th. I will be at the Barnes and Noble in Huntington Beach at 7 p.m. I've never been to Huntington Beach, have I? If you're a How to Cake It VIP, you saw some awesome footage from our Toronto book signing in your VIP video last night. It's gonna be even more fun. Are we gonna be, is the bookstore like right on the beach? I don't know. I doubt it, right? Probably not. I feel like wet books aren't good. You know what I mean? It's time to add the bone to the face of this ham. <laughs> That's the same way I made the bone in my turkey cake. That's what my roast cakes have in common. Just remember, the yeah. turkey was like <laughs> The ham is more like Yeah. I wish I saw it. Orhan! Oh, it's probably gone. I also want to add some fat onto the surface of the meat because I want it to look juicy. So for this, I'm using just a pinch of my modeling chocolate and I have worked in some vegetable shortening. This is actually gonna make the modeling chocolate kind of fall apart, but this is a good thing in this case. Now I'm going to work it into some of those larger veins on the front of the ham using a paintbrush to just brush it into the grooves and make it look natural. I want this ham to look like it's hot out of the oven. So I'm going to brush some clear piping gel over the whole surface of the front of the ham. Not the bone, just the meat. Now that the paint on the surface of the skin of our ham is dry, I'm going to brush the entire surface with maple syrup. See Canadians, I go. still love you. I brought a Canadian element to this American Thanksgiving. Once I'm done brushing the maple goodness all over, I'm going to take some dried cloves and press them into the center of every triangle on the ham skin, just like a real roasted ham. Remember the perfect squares? I'm gonna cover them with pineapple. 
I chose to use dehydrated pineapple rings. They also have candied pineapple rings. Boy, did we research this. But they're thicker and they look more yellow, so they don't look like they've been baked. So I chose dehydrated pineapple rings, which Jeremy drove to the other end of the city for. Thank you, Jeremy. Did he really? Yes, he really did. <laughs> Please subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell because I just covered my mistake with dehydrated pineapple that was driven to me by Jeremy. Too bad you couldn't cover your eight-sided pencil mistake with dehydrated. Why do you keep bringing that up? I feel like you get a lot of enjoyment from that, Jocelyn. I'm going to brush a little bit of plain apricot jam onto the pineapple because I want it to look like the whole roast was glazed at once. Now inside of the pineapple, I'm going to add a maraschino cherry. Oh no. Yeah, not Jeremy maraschino. and I went there again. Why would you go there again? Well, that's how these hams are made. So the cherry goes in the middle of the pineapple rings and a toothpick holds them in place. And as I said in a past episode, whatever you do, do not Google how to make maraschino cherries. I told Jeremy I wanted to do something to this roasted ham. Then I completely forgot and did all the other steps. He was like, so yo, when are you gonna brulee it? And I was like, no. So I pulled out some cloves in some areas and used Bernie to just brulee some parts of the skin of the ham because I wanted it to look like a real roast. Don't forget, there's only a few days left to register for Camp Cake at its sale price of $19.99. We will not be making a roasted ham cake. But we will be spending the whole day baking together and giving Santa's milk and cookies a total cake over. Can we have like bursting milk and cookies? Like forget them. The whole How to Cake It team will be there, so please come and join the family. Register at howtocakeit.com. I'm about to give mashed sweet potatoes a total cake over. You look away for no reason. <laughs> it's just to make the turn more like abrupt. For my mashed sweet potatoes, I'm simply taking some Italian meringue buttercream and dyeing it sweet potato color. And then what I'm gonna do is use some cake scraps, some vanilla cake scraps, not dyed pink, just vanilla, into the buttercream. And you just wanna keep stirring them in until it becomes like a mashed potato consistency. I actually used a hand mixer at one point because the bowl got so full and some of it splattered. I'm hoping you're not gonna leave that footage in. I just picture you and Orhan like, yes, leave that in, yes. I carved this cake just like you would carve a ham. So first I used the like, that pitchforky thing. And then I served myself a slice with a scoop of mashed potato. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone in the US. And happy belated Thanksgiving, Canada. Click here to watch my Thanksgiving food cakes compilation over on my new channel, How to Cake It Step by Step. Woo! Ow! Woo! Ooh! That ooh was sad, leave that out. <laughs> that didn't sound celebratory. <laughs>